What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. In this video we are jumping into DC vs Vampires issue number 11 with only one more issue after this. It is all coming down to this one last moment. The one last stand for all of humanity with the Birds of Prey along with Damian Wayne and Frankenstein's monster. They are headed directly for the Vampire King. They are going Going to take on Nightwing while Babs gets ready to take on the man that she loved. We have Supergirl. She is trying to make it to Australia. She is trying to make it to the rockets that go off into space. And then Green Arrow. He is doing everything that he can to free the people from these blood farms, from these concentration camps that the vampires keep them in. Each of these events transpiring at the same time. What is remaining of humanity? Humanity, they are trying with every bit of their power, every bit of their energy, every bit of their humanity to save the world. Now, be sure to subscribe to the channel, make sure that you like this video, and with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into this issue, we are picking up in Gotham City. We have the Birds of Prey, Black Canary, Harley Quinn, Batman. Girl, Damian Wayne, and Frankenstein's monster. They are currently battling off the hordes of biters that are coming for them. As vampires turn to ash underneath their blades, Damian is just hoping that Babs has some kind of plan because as it stands, they are severely outnumbered. The hordes of vampires are descending down on them. Luckily for them, the heavy hitters, they are not currently here, but it will only be a matter of time before they show their faces. So whatever Barbara Gordon has planned, it needs to happen and it needs to happen now. That is what takes us to Australia. We have our Wonder Twin, we have Steel, and we have Supergirl. Finding a way into the facility where these, these ships and rockets are being shot from. They are trying with everything they can to get Supergirl up into the upper atmosphere and get that sunlight. As they put on some disguises, Taking the clothes off of the guards, what they find is that the guards are not vampires. They are aliens. Because the vampires have aliens doing the dirty work. They won't risk an interplanetary incident. Nightwing wanted to get rid of anyone that the vampires can't turn or feed off. Martian Manhunter had warned that executing hundreds of aliens would cause a galactic crisis. And so he made deals to ship them back to their home world. In exchange, all of those planets will steer clear of Earth. So that is what is going on with these ships. These ships are taking what is left of the alien races and sending them back home. But as they make their way through this facility, that is when they run into the main man. They run into Lobo, being hired by Dick Grayson. It is his job to ensure nobody like these guys are able to get through. And while Steel thinks he might be able to do something. We see Lobo put him down, grab the Wonder Twin, and have a gun pointed at Supergirl before any of them can actually do anything. He knows what they're trying to do. He knows that they're trying to get these aliens shipping out of here and recruit them to their lost cause. His job is to make sure this does not happen. But if Lobo is anything, he is consistent. He is an opportunist. So anytime he gets a deal put before him, he always contemplates it. He wants wonders, and he weighs his options. And so with Supergirl offering him this deal, we are taken to Smallville. We have Grifter, we have Green Arrow, and we have the Swamp Thing. Green Arrow bringing in the Swamp Thing as his secret weapon. Green Arrow is letting Grifter know to round up as many people as you can. Put one of these weapons in their hands. A weapon, a spike, coming from the Swamp Thing. This was his way of sneaking in an entire army without anybody being aware of it. He lets Grifter know that now is the time to fight. Now is the time that we take them on, that we free the people, and we take down Hawkman. As they prepare for battle, we are taken over to Gotham. At this point, our heroes are completely surrounded as they run out of options. This is where we see members of the Bat Family show
show up. From spoiler to the signal, they have come in blaring as much light as they can possibly get. Our heroes getting the opportunity to jump on the motorcycles. They make their getaway. With them being safe, at least for the moment, we are taken back over to Lobo, secretly escorting the three heroes to one of the ships. It doesn't take long for Martian Manhunter to catch on to what is happening. As Lobo trying to break through the gates, trying to convince the guard to let him through, Martian Manhunter and his daughter, they come up to him, trying to figure out what is going on, trying to figure out what his true intentions are. Lobo wastes no time letting them know exactly what is going on. With Steel calling him a traitor, he takes his hammer and he goes for Martian Manhunter. Lobo lifting up his pistol, blowing the guard's head right off of his shoulders. The fight is ensuing, with Martian Manhunter letting him know that you shouldn't have come here. He was going to know what the plan was. He was going to sense it. That all of his efforts, they are futile. And so, as Steel and Lobo struggle on this battle, we are taken back over to Gotham. Our heroes making their getaway with the horde of vampires right on their tail. Canary able to use her ability and blow them back temporarily. That is when Gorilla Grodd shows up. He starts smashing, knocking some of our heroes off. We see the bat signals turn on. The entire street lights up. This puts Gorilla Grodd at pause, and it gives Barbara Gordon the opportunity to go for Nightwing. As they get past all of the barricades, they land on the other side, believing that they got lucky, that they are able to go and get Dick Grayson. Looking ahead of them, this is where they see some of the heavy hitters. From Power Girl to Wonder Girl, from KG Beast to Mr. Freeze, the heavy hitters are back on scene. Picking back up with Martian Manhunter, he has steel on the ground, appearing to be relatively beat, though he is not dead. He is messed up. This is when he goes up to our Wonder Twin and Supergirl, letting her know that this is where her journey ends, that he has become so much more powerful, but he lets the Wonder Wonder Twin know that this is not her fight, that he will ensure that she is returned back to her home world, but she has to stay out of it. Ripping off the cloak of Supergirl, it is revealed that this is not Supergirl. This is just the Wonder Twin using her power and ability to make it look like someone is underneath that cloak. Because Martian Manhunter, he had been tricked. What he had sensed was not what he expected. Because Supergirl, she had snuck around, she made her way onto a ship already. That ship, it is now blasting off into space. That is when Martian Manhunter screams at everybody to shoot it down. That they can't allow it to get above the clouds. They cannot allow her to see that sunlight. With a giant explosion, it appears that the ship has gone into flames. That Supergirl has been taken down and what seems as one of the last hopes of humanity, it has been destroyed. And and that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Alright, so I think Supergirl definitely was not on that ship. She was probably on another ship. More than likely, she is able to make her escape. I believe that she is going to be the one to take out the heavy hitters in Gotham. And we are going to see the final confrontation between Barbara Gordon and Dick Grayson. It's kind of poetic. The two of them being star-crossed lovers, if you will. In the main continuity, we are seeing them more or less commit to each other indefinitely. They're not married or anything like that, but they have made a vow that they are going to stick together no matter what. And so it is horrifically poetic that Barbara Gordon be the one to drive a spike into the chest of Nightwing. With one more issue to go, it is all coming down to these last moments. I still think there are a lot of very unrealistic aspects, a lot of plot armor, a lot of, a lot of twists and turns, a lot of manipulating characters just to make this story work properly. But one of the reasons that I love Elseworld stories just so much is because everything is at stake. Anybody can die. Whereas the main continuity, we know people are coming back. Just like the Justice League and the death of the Justice League. We knew the Justice League would come back for Earth Zero. We knew that this was the inevitable outcome. But when you go on Elseworld world stories. There is so much more at stake. There is so much more risk because you can kill anybody on a whim. And I think that is one of the reasons
reasons that I love DC versus vampires, one of the reasons that I love everything going on with DCs, with the Knights of Steel, all of this stuff. The Elseworld stories are arguably some of the best stuff coming out of DC Comics. And I know a lot of people give Tom Taylor a lot of crap. Now this isn't Tom Taylor, but Tom Taylor does write some amazing Elseworld stories. I know a lot of people aren't fans of Superman, Son of Kal-El. It appears a lot of people aren't fans of Nightwing because those videos only get like a thousand views, which is super low for this channel. But when it comes to his Elseworld stories, it is without a doubt the most popular stuff that he writes. I do think James Tinian has done a fantastic job of writing DC vs. Vampires for what it is. If we move away the plot armor, if we move away the stuff that really doesn't make a whole lot of sense, it is a fun, it is an adventurous, it is very explosive, in-your-face, action-packed story. I do think that it has taken way too long to get where we are. With it only being 12 issues, they could have made this a lot quicker, they could have done this a lot faster. Usually, I'm an advocate for making the stories longer, but for this story, I feel like they drug it on too long. They showed us too many characters that don't make sense being turned into vampires, and so it kind of it kind of took away from what the story could have been. But let me know your thoughts, let me know your theories, if you would like to get caught up on everything going on with DC vs. Vampires. Be sure to check out the link in my description, as well as the top of this video. It is gonna get you completely caught up on the entirety of this series. If you would like to support the channel, you can always do so by joining the channel membership. Much like Patreon, having 5 different tiers. From $1 to $50. From loyalty badges to getting free comics every single month. Not not only does this help out the channel tremendously, but you are getting tons of perks in the process. Now, if you are unable to do this, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit that notification bell, and with that being said, until the next breakdown.